bit of familiarity. So good luck to him. Travis Hunter, he, of course, the elite recruit. Florida State thought they were going to get him. Then he ends up committing and playing for Deion Sanders at Jackson State. Deion, I don't think he actually alluded to Travis Hunter in oh. the press conference because there's got to be something. He had where a you video can. where he said, yeah. yeah, Travis is coming. Yeah, and yeah, right. okay. And so he entered the portal officially on Sunday night. Is there any – is it a 100% lock yeah. he's going to Colorado? I think it's a pretty good lock that he's going to Colorado, but um, he did say in his – announcement that he's going to have to go see if that's really the best fit for him. I would think that the one thing that could sway him is a school like FSU or Georgia or someone who is probably better off to win a conference title and compete gets him in there because the NIL is going to be almost the same anywhere he goes. Like his, He's going to have a number where he's going to get paid, you know, at Colorado, at Georgia, at FSU. Like, they're, you know, guys that are as talented as Travis Hunter, like, you know, Arch, I said this about Arch Manning. Arch Manning's going to have a number you have to hit. And if you hit that number, then the school doesn't matter because you know what the number is. So he's going to get you legitimately pick where he wants to be. He wanted to be with Dion. You would think he'd be with Dion. Now, Colorado, I don't think, is going to have a great shot, even with all the new talent they're going to bring in, to win the Pac-12 next year because there's a lot of good teams bringing back a lot of good guys. And, you know, um, they're going to have that year adjustment. Now, when UCLA and USC leave after next year, you know, that league is going to be as wide open as it is. Plus, with Penix will be gone, Knicks will be gone, there'll be a lot of people leaving, and they'll have maybe a jump on the quarterback hierarchy and all that. So does he want to wait a couple years to really compete for one, or does he want to do it right now? Man, he, the last time I saw him, he was doing a live stream over the Dion press conference and saying, I'm coming, I'm yeah. coming, don't worry, coach, I'm coming, or whatever. And so, I, you know, I think that's what everybody just chalked up as the inevitable move for him. Um, I would assume that's probably still where he ends up, but, you know, if you ask 100%, no, I don't think it's 100%. I don't think anything's 100% in, in NIL era, so um, – you know, there's certainly some teams that could come calling and uh, maybe sway him, but I would say, like, yeah, 95 to 99 percent chance that he probably ends up at, at Colorado with Dion. But uh, you never know uh, because now it's it's free reign to you know go ahead and, and pursue him. So I'm sure you know a lot of those schools that were doing so previously. I mean, we remember you know Nick Saban had his little pot shot at at Jackson State and and you know, alluding to Travis Hunter about getting paid a million dollars. You know, he, he did, he did that whole thing uh, last year. Uh, so you had the Sabins of the world that were, that were after you. Um, I mean, he was the top dude. So uh, I don't think that that's going to change too much. Now that he's in the transfer portal. I'd expect there's going to be a lot of pursuers and um, you know, I just think Dion's got the edge, but we'll see. And Nick Evers, Oklahoma is headed to Wisconsin to play for Luke Fickle. Who's of course their new head coach. He was at flower Mound high school uh, top 200 prospect, 166 in his senior class of 2022. Uh, he originally committed to Florida, flipped to Oklahoma, signed with the Sooners, played behind Dylan Gabriel. And I, what I'm going to say about this is that Gabriel, remember, went out in that game against Texas, and it wasn't him that came in. It was somebody else. That, they could not – they had nobody. Davis Bevel. Yeah, they just – their quarterback room went from as elite and deep with elite players as anywhere to – when Dylan Gabriel went out, I mean, they were in trouble in that Texas game and also any other time. Well, I, and I'm sure they were trying to preserve his red shirt uh, at the time, seeing he's just a four-star guy. But Jackson Arnold's coming in there, too, and Craig can speak to Oklahoma better than I can. But it's wide open at Wisconsin. I mean, he's got a shot to go in there and win the job right away, depending on if they bring in somebody else. Another big quarterback transfer just came down the line, Drew Pine going to Arizona State uh, from Notre Dame. So that's the second uh, transfer QB that Arizona State has picked up. I would think that he has a little bit of an advantage over Jacob Conover and that he was a starter. Jacob Conover was the backup uh, or one of the backups at BYU, but uh, Drew Pine is on its way to uh, Tempe. Yeah, um, BYU managing without Jaron Hall um, over the weekend, mm -hmm. um, which we'll hopefully get around to. But, uh, yeah, Drew Pine, uh, that's a nice pickup for Kenny Dillingham in Arizona State. You think now with uh, he and Conover that their quarterback room is pretty well stocked uh, as far as you know making moves on, on further transfers go. Um, but, uh, yeah, what we're talking about, uh, Evers, I mean, you know, he's a highly rated guy at the time, but, I mean, that kind of goes without saying, uh, especially for Oklahoma. I uh, don't know a ton about him other than, you know, people were excited when he committed and all that, but Dylan Gabriel appears to be coming back next year uh, with remaining eligibility, and you would think that if he was going to make a move, uh, he would have made a move now, although, you know, I guess if there's any discontent or whatever, something changes, you know, there's still time in the spring for that, but that would be – 
you know, kind of kind of late in the game for for any change. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the writing's on the wall for Nick Evers if he wants to play. You know, um, next year it's it's not likely going to be at Oklahoma. So, um, you know, we'll see. Uh, Wisconsin clearly needed a quarterback, and and that was obvious uh, all year long. It's obvious last couple of years. So Luke Fickle coming in, uh, you expected they would make some moves uh, in the quarterback game, and uh, and they do. So uh, yeah, we'll see. How